introduction. Um, he has been around for uh, several years <clears throat> here. As I mentioned last time when I introduced Ronald, it's exciting to watch these young men preach their first sermons in class and develop their skills and develop their, their style and their talent and, and presenting the gospel message, presenting what God has for us. And I'm excited to hear what God has for us tonight through Josh, his servant Josh. I know that Josh has prayed and sought his will for tonight's service. So let's listen as Josh speaks for us tonight. Well, good evening. It is an honor, and I will say it will be a pleasure after I get done uh, to be here. And I don't want to take the, I don't take this opportunity lightly, um, and that's why I'm so nervous. But it's quite an it's quite an experience, honestly, to be sitting here and one by one they all start leaving, and then you're just like praying that hopefully there's someone behind you that's like gonna come up next, but then it's not it's not not there. But uh, I am thankful. Another thing I'm thankful for before I get started here is that for the cooler weather, uh, I have been a uh, uh, recipient and thankful recipient of that. And, you know, it almost just feels like, you know, Christmas is, Christmas is upon us. I mean, I don't mean to be jumping, jumping the gun or anything, but uh, talk along those. Just This has nothing to do really with the sermon. I'll, I'll tie it in quickly, but, but, you know, don't want you to get too focused on this. But as a little bit of a uh, to get me comfortable and maybe you and get you involved. You know, there's been a little bit of discussion here recently about uh, Christmas music and is it too soon to start listening to it? And so I'm going to take a quick poll here, you know, for those, just raise your hand quickly, you know, for, raise your hand if you have not started listening to Christmas music yet. Oh, okay. And then raise your hand quickly if you have. Oh, oh I like it. But I would have sided with the first side, but, but I, my thinking has changed. And uh, just this past Sunday, I must confess, I started listening to, to Christmas music. And uh, it, 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 it's too good. I fought it for a while. Because I agree, I don't want to start too soon, you know, because it, it's, it's special in that time. And I don't want to get too tired of it, but I fought it for as long as I could. And then I was like, i got to listen to some Christmas music. But, uh, but, but you know how I listened to that Christmas music was, I know, cliche, but through my phone. And a lot of what we do in our life, uh, at least in uh, my life, is I do a lot revolves around my phone. I use it every day and every hour, once in a while in class, never in Mr. Hamilton's. But uh, so much you know, we use this a lot. And that's what we're going to be uh, using to apply the biblical uh, principles that we're going to look at tonight. I think it applies and is very, just goes straight into the biblical principles that we're going to talk about. Uh, the first thing that uh, it has been really helping me, and that's a sermon I've, I have been thinking about, and it's an idea I've been thinking about. I'm sure we've all heard uh, a sermon along the same lines. But it's something that the Lord's been using uh, in my life to speak to me. So I pray that the Holy Spirit can uh, help you out like he's been helping me out, that he's been leading me to speak about this. But the first thing I was realizing, I was thinking, when I was thinking about my phone to, to, and applying it to my uh, Christian walk with God, was that, you know, sometimes my contacts need to be cleaned up. And, I, and so I was scrolling through my contacts the other day, and first off, there's like, second name down, there's like a name, I don't even know who it is. Like, I think I got my mom's old phone and I got her contacts like a long time ago. And so now it's just been like transferred over and over. And so now I have no idea who it is. But I was scrolling along and I saw one contact that particularly stuck out as irrelevant in my life. And I was like, I, because it stuck out was because it had took up four contact slots. I have no idea why. But it's the same name and the same thing just over and over again. And it was weirder still, my mom's, where she used to work, uh, she worked there for a greater portion of my life growing up, but it is now out of business. 
It doesn't even function anymore. Why do I have that in my phone, especially four times over? And I think that applied that to my life and thinking, you know, do I need to do some contact cleanup in my life, in my spiritual life? And now I'm not saying that you need to go and look at your friends and you're like, oh, well, he, he, he's not doing as well, you know, as me spiritually, so I'm just going to cut him off and, you know, not talk to him anymore. It's not what I'm trying to say. But what I am saying is we need to evaluate, to look at our life uh, with God's help about the closest friends to us, the friends that are making an impact on our life, the friends that we are taking uh, social cues for, things that we're picking up from. Are they making me a better person? More importantly, are they making me a better Christian? And I, we all have heard the old adage, I'm sure, of, you know, you are a compilation of your five closest friends. And I have found that to be pretty true in my life. And I have, there was a racing thought in my mind to go into detail about which detail I, or habit I have picked up from my five closest friends. It would be rather funny, but probably, probably shouldn't. Anyhow, but so uh, better wisdom stepped in. But it helps you realize to think like, is the friends that I have near me, Lord, you know, the friends that you have put in my life, are they glorifying to you? Are they helping me become a better Christian? Are they drawing me closer to you? Are they helping me keep my feet to the fire? And I think in Proverbs it says, He who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. And along that line of, you know, if you have a friend who is not exactly doing the best spiritually, I'm not saying, again, they need a strong spiritual influence in their life. I'm not saying get rid of them. But what I would challenge you to do and what I challenge us to do is, in those such relationships, challenge us to be the stronger Christian, to be the one who's the tone setter of that relationship, to be the one that, if anyone's taking cues in that relationship, that they're taking cues from us and that they're learning more about God and how to, be, how to follow Him through our life, not the other way around. And just like that, as that verse says, we need to learn how to walk with the wise. We need to start choosing friends that are, you know, wise and that we are going to learn good things from. Uh, another aspect of choosing good friends is, are you sharpening each other? As it says a few uh, chapters later in Proverbs, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. When I look at my life, I want my friends, and I, I can say this, they have, are helping me become a better person one way or another. And at many times I have, if you've been in the boys' dorm or in Michael's house, you will hear a, d a discussion on theological, theological debate of what do we do here? But it's ironing, sharpening, ironing, and helping us, taking their ideas. Well, that's not awful, but I don't totally agree with it, but it's, it's a good thing as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. So I think it would challenge us in the contact cleanup to just be open to the Lord's leading and say, is there some updating of my contacts that needs to happen? And Lord, I thank you for the friends that you have placed in my life. And that just keep every aspect of our life open, but especially in the area of contacts. Along with that, I was looking at, you know, your phone has storage. And a lot of times, especially in the past, I realized phones have somewhat have gotten bigger. But a lot of times people struggle with, uh, I did, struggle with keeping their storage clean. And what I mean by that is if you get your storage too overloaded, I know it's happened a lot, plenty of times, your storage gets too overloaded, it will start to like make your phone go slow and start to like kind of like fritzing out and like crashing. The apps will actually crash. And, and I started thinking, that's a lot in our Christian life. A lot of times we get too busy. We get our storage a little bit too full. Even doing good things, even if it's a good app in our life. But sometimes we get too busy doing too many good things, and even if it's not good things. And that's the point. The principle is to look at our life and say, Lord, are the things I'm doing in my life, are the things that I'm filling my storage with, is it, is it benefiting me? Is it helping you? And just like that, even if we can get busy in well-doing and becomes too busy, and our storage can be overcome, where we just kind of start to slow down, and we get too exhausted, and get too overtired, and we just kind of, we can crash. And I understand, especially in our lifestyle here at Hope Sound, I understand it's easy to get busy. 
And it's easy to get busy doing great things. Uh, I am thankful for the every opportunity that I get to do. But I think it's with time, sometime we just need to take time to ask the Lord to step back and look at our life and ask his help. Is there something that maybe I need to free up or maybe I need to delete that app to give me a little bit more storage for the things that are most important for my family, for my kids, for my close friends, and more importantly, for you, Jesus. Is my, the things that is loading up my storage in my Christian walk, is it keeping me to the point where I can't spend time with you. There's a story that illustrates it perfectly from the Bible. It's in the book of Luke. And it's, it says, Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village. And a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened into his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And if that's a good thing. She was serving, right? And so she went, up to, she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. Like, yeah, that's right. I, I don't like to be working when other people are just sitting around. Uh, I, that, that's not, I don't really like that. But what was Jesus' response to her? But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which shall not be taken away from her. When I read this story, it's powerful and absolutely convicting. Because how many times do we get busy serving, following what, the, what, the, what we think the Lord wants us to do? And we probably are, but we don't take enough time just to sit at the Lord's feet and just sit in his presence and learn from him. It's so easy to do, friends, and I know I can see it in my own life. There's times when I just get too busy with doing good things, serving, doing what things, but, you know, just hustling out the door like, oh, Lord, help me throughout the day, going to bed late, getting up early, not taking enough proper time for devotions, not taking enough proper time for, like I said, the people that should matter most in our life. So let us, through this, apply the storage application to our life and ask the Lord, do I... What are some apps, what are some things in my life that, although good, maybe, and maybe there are some things that aren't as you're using your time for that aren't as uh, uplifting. You just say, Lord, do I need to take some things and delete some apps in my life? Just even if it's for a little bit to take some more time to rest into your presence and sit at your feet. I think that's a challenge that I've taken and, you know, I would challenge us all to just ask the Lord that question. But another thing about phones that I was thinking about was that we need to stay connected to the power source. There was a time in my life when I made some not so wise decisions with my phone. And what I mean by that is, it sounds worse, it was pretty bad. It wasn't really the smartest thing I've ever done. But I took my phone, it was one of the top of the line phones of the Apple products. It was like when it came out with like the water resistant. And so I was like, I was like, uh, me and a group of guys, you know, we're like, yeah, man, like, this thing can go under water. This thing, this thing's pretty cool. It can, uh, it can take pictures underwater. It can uh, video underwater. So we took the case off that. We're like, tried a couple of times. We're like, yeah, it's working. It's pretty cool. So then we're like, let's take some more pictures underwater. And before you think we're just completely didn't think about, we looked up and it said, like, it can go for, like, down to three feet for for 30 minutes, you know, oh, we'll be fine. Just don't go below three feet and, you know, and, and we won't keep down for 30 minutes. So we were down there for just a couple minutes taking pictures and whatever. And, oh, it was great. Picked it up, pulled it out. And I was like, oh, it's working great. That's so cool. Until, like, just a few seconds later, it just kind of, like, started, like, things started shooting across my screen, like, weird little things. And I'm like, and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> and then my phone just completely crashed and never to be woken up again. And I just recently actually, uh, it's been kicking around my house and my family's had it for ever since then. And just recently, uh, we just took one of those iPhone things where you turn it in and get like 20 bucks for it or something. But it's a very expensive phone. And as you can imagine, my family, my parents weren't the most happiest with me. <laughs> as they have every right to be. I look back and I'm like, you're pretty smart, Josh. Not at all. But anyhow, but during that time, I guess maybe to serve penance and also, I mean, they didn't need to give me a phone at all, but they gave me, my parents gave me my mom's old, old phone that she'd had for a while. 
And I took that and I used it. And it was the start of the summer too. And so we were traveling around. And that phone would not stay charged for more than like, it felt like 30 minutes. I was charging that thing all the time. I was walking around like with the charging cable in hand. And of course, like I said, we're in the summer. So like walking into someone's house or whatever. And it'd be like, hey, can I borrow your power outlet there just for a second? Or like it'd be in the van and I'm like, hey, can I have that just for a little bit? And looking back on that, it helps me think about, that's probably the closest I've ever been to being connected to the power source my, <laughs> the whole day. And when you look at it in a spiritual light, too many times, that phone, I'm going to tell you, could not survive on an hour's charge, it felt like, much less yesterday's charge. And so many times in our Christian life, sometimes, somehow we try to think in ourselves like, well, I had a good devotion this week, I should be good, I should be set. No, no, that's not how it works. I can, and I'm telling you, it's perfect. We have to stay connected to the power. Not only do we need to get a full, uh, a full charge every day and every night, uh, but we need to keep connected to the power source throughout the day. Uh, I, we just have to take time. And how do we do that? Well, we can dive deep into pr- to the Bible. We can read the Bible and get deep into it and do some study. As, Joshua, as it says in Joshua 1 8, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Then that's not all. As a good relationship tactic in staying connected to the power, which our power source is Jesus. We need to talk to him. If, our best friend, if we claim that Jesus is our best friend, but we don't talk to him, that's a little strange. But we need to talk to him all, the, all throughout the day. And so I would say, as it says in 1 Thessalonians, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. That's the key. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I understand what this verse, I've tried to take it and apply it to my life. I understand. I struggle, if I'm going to be honest, just sitting down and praying. I'm, I don't know if I struggle with ADHD or whatever, but like I sit down and pray and I'm like, oh Lord, oh Lord, like three minutes, like not even three minutes, like 30 seconds later, I'm like thinking about who knows what. I'm like, I'm supposed to be praying and just focus back in. You know, there's things to help you through that. Get the prayer list and pray through it and keep you focused. And then there, you can get the, just discipline yourself. But there's one thing that I have, this pray without ceasing has always I've always wondered about how do you do that? You just walk around, you know, praying out loud, shop cart, you know, Walmart. Like, I mean, you can do it. I'm not saying don't do it. But one thing that has helped me in my spiritual walk is uh, praying without ceasing. When I just walk throughout the day, driving along, whatever, if I see a person or if I see a situation that reminds me of them, I'm doing a a better job and the Lord's helped me. When a situation comes to mind, I just pray for it right there. Say, Lord, help them right now. I don't know what they need. Lord, or if I do know what the name I say, intervene in that situation, bring comfort, bring healing, whatever it is, just whatever I'm doing, I just try to pray without ceasing throughout the day. I try to stay connected to the power source. I say, Lord, help me on this test. I studied for a few minutes. I need you. You know, whatever it is, stay. No, that's not. Do not just expect God to bail you out. But anyhow, but, but Lord, stay connected to the power source throughout the day. And then along with that, we need to learn to focus on our own battery. Uh, Going along with uh, the theme of keeping your charge up, isn't it awful when you're trying to charge your phone and, you know, I got a wireless charger recently and like, it's been like the coolest thing sweeping the boys' dorm. Like there's probably like four or five of them now in the dorm. Like it's like the coolest thing. And now, but like mine, like if you don't get it on there, just like right, like literally it's above my head. So I'm like, like rotating it around. If you don't get it on there just right and feel it vibrate, knowing that it's charging, you wake up the next morning and and realize that it didn't charge and you're like on 20%. And so you're, you're going to go through the day, you know, like just plug in every now and then, you know, like, Oh, Hey, but along with that, your friends are like, you're, you might be plugged in at a class and they're like, yo, what percent you on? And you're like, I got, I got 22. And they're like, I got 18 handed over. You, you know, you know what I'm talking about. We're just, in, in so many times, that's what we do in our spiritual life, is that we try to give when, 
of our spiritual self. We try to give when we don't have enough to give. Our battery's not getting charged, so we're just trying to keep on giving, but we're not, we don't have anything to give within ourselves because it's not getting charged. And I'm not saying, you know, we've all heard the thing, you know, give until it hurts, and that's fine, but not when it's hurting your spiritual walk, not when you can't charge yourself, not when you can't stay charged in your own spiritual walk. But along that same line, you know, aren't worrying about your own battery percentage of your spiritual life, aren't screen cheaters the worst? Like, I'm getting to it. Like when someone sitting next to you is looking at your screen while you're texting around the bus or whatever it is, I admit to being one of those people. I knew it was coming. I admit to being one of those people. I'm naturally curious, and that's something I'm working on. It's, it is what it is, but I'm working on it. But the illustration to help me think, that made me think of this, it was just this past week in chapel. I won't tell you which one, but we were sitting in, in chapel, and it's in, uh, in, in our row, it's uh, Seth, me, and Jordan. Great row. We're set up for success there. Anyhow, but we're si- I'm sitting there, and it's during prayer, and this is the confession part. I had my eyes open, and I was kind of looking around a little bit. Well, Jordan looked at me, and he was like, close your eyes. And I'm like, you close your eyes. And so I, like, put my hand over his eyes, and then he's like, Whew, like, with his eyes. And, like, we're sitting there in chapel like that. In our spiritual life, we need to focus on our own spiritual life. And we can't, we can't just be sitting there trying to put our hand over their eyes when our eyes are the ones open. We can't just be sitting there looking at, looking at their spiritual walk and saying, well, I'm doing this, but you're not doing that. Or I'm, I, I'm called to run this race, but you're running it a little bit differently. No, we need to focus on our own spiritual. We need to focus on putting the hand over our own eyes. Uh, as it says in Colossians, set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. Let us keep focused on the things that matter on our spiritual walk before we try to criticize others in their walk. As Jesus says in Matthew, why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or, or as it states in Hebrews, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. They didn't, the writer of Hebrews did not tell us to look at his race, or run his race, or run your fellow brother's race. No, he said, with a race that is set before you. We have to get our eyes off of the people around us have to get our eyes off of the things that easily distract us and set them on God, for he is the author and finisher of our race and the only one that truly matters. And so many times it's so easy to get distracted by things around us, but we just need to step back and say, Lord, you're all that matters. I don't care what anyone else do, does. I don't care if they're doing it a little bit better than me. Lord, if they are, you know, help me. I don't care if I'm doing a little better than them. You know, Lord, help me. And then we can pray for them also, but we need to focus on running our own race before we try to start saying, oh, run a little bit faster, or whatever it may be. I hope that you've gotten some help. The Lord, Holy Spirit has used my frail weird words and little weird stories to help you understand the biblical principles that are here. I hope that in our contacts that we can remember to let the Lord lead and that sometimes it's good to update our contacts and say, Lord, are my friends the friends that you want? Are my friends the ones that are going to help you help me? Are my friends the one that's going to keep my feet to the fire? Are they the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to my Daniel? And also along with that, let's remember to manage our storage well. We all have storages. We all have the same amount of time in a day, but we cannot let it get over, overfilled or overused because we will not be able to make it throughout our life just if we're running at over storage or even right a little bit right under storage because even then your phone start and our lives start to slow down and we start to get tired out and burned out. We have to look and ask the Lord, what are some things in my life that 
you want me to work on. Maybe I need to get just set aside so I can sit at the feet of Jesus. Let us remember to stay connected to the power throughout the day and get a full charge every single day. As it says, and the easiest way to do that is as it says in John 15, 5, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. From apart from me, you can do nothing. Let us stay abiding in him, friends. Let us stay focused on him. And let's not go a day without getting a fully charged and staying connected to the power source throughout the day. And then let's focus on our own spiritual walk. Let's not get distracted. Let's not, friends, it's easy, but let's just keep our eyes unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our race. As we come to pray in a little bit, if I haven't gone too long, whatever you need today, if the Lord has spoken to you about maybe one of the issues that, that I've tried to help through the Holy Spirit's power, then come and pray about it. Or if there's a different issue that he's speaking to you about, whatever it may be, if you're burdened down, if you, you're, the cares of life are getting to you, it's easy to do. I want to remind, leave you with this. And as, a Matthew, as it says in Matthew, Matthew 11, 28, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Living this Christian walk is the best thing out there. But sometimes we have to learn to just step back and take a little bit of inventory of, what, of how we're doing. But when that time comes, the Lord invites us, Come unto me, all ye who are burdened and heavy labored, and I will give you rest. Pastor.